Hello party people, y'all. So hold up. Y'all know by the title of this video. <laughs> y'all doing funny. Hello girl, I'm a random walking to my car, y'all. That would be so funny. Oh my god. Oh, that's funny. But um but y'all, oh my goodness. So y'all know I don't usually um I don't think I ever made a video like this, but y'all can't tell by the title. I'm just doing a little ranty rant. It's not really a rant because I'm not mad. But I'm just speaking my, my opinion on this subject. Um, so, you know, I'm new into the dating pool. Not really, but I am kind of, whatever. And so, so y'all, so, all right, wait, what I was saying? Oh, yeah, so y'all know I'm not, I don't know what I want to call it, but I'm not mad about the dating pool, but I just got a couple things. I just want to get off my chest about it. Um, so the other day, and y'all tell me if I'm being too hard, because sometimes I can be hard on people. Oh, look at her. All in my grill. Come on, see. I think we should go. I think we should do it. But I just have like my genuine concerns about it, right? So the other day, and y'all, I need to do my hair. I need to retwist my hair, but I'm not retwisting for my baby party. I think I'm gonna find me a cute little style to do because the theme is troll. By the time y'all see this, Shala parted and passed. This is a whole, I'm gonna upload this the week after her birthday. But this is happening the week of, so all of that, yeah. So, but this one lock, the one lay down that's bothering me. But um, I still don't have my screen fixed. That's why the glare is glaring, y'all. That's I'm about to start using my uh camera again because I'm trying to get my phone fixed. But I just have a few concerns that I want to address. So the other day, minding my business, running errands, this young man, he stops me. He like, how you doing? Well, I'm good. How are you? He was, I'm good. What's your name? I tell my name is Say. He like, okay, my name is whatever, whatever. And he like, I want to take you out. I say, where you going to take me? Where you want to go? And I was just like, I don't know. I thought you had, <laughs> like, I thought you was going to come with it. You came at me. Like, you, you just had this whole plan in mind and that just kind of like made me go but because let me know if i'm doing too much but i feel like i be feeling like okay i feel like if i was a dude and i went up to a female like i would have in mind at least two or three spots like all right she she in a parish she in ascension parish i could take her to you know br br got some nice spots you know somewhere nice that we could i could get to know her and you know really get to you know see what she like whatever whatever so i would throw stuff out there like um do you like sushi and then she's like oh yeah okay whatever whatever then i would say well look to make things fair how about you let me know where you always wanted to go and we can make that happen that right now i feel like that will make a female go hmm, okay because at the end of the day it really don't matter. I mean, don't take us to IHOP for the first day, clearly. But take us somewhere nice, you know, somewhere nice, somewhere cute. Because then, once you get to the date, that's where it's like, that's the end all be all. Because either the conversation is going to be so fire that you want to take her on another date and she wants to go on another date with you. Or the vibe was just so cool that y'all not even going to text each other when y'all get home. You know what I'm saying? And so, I don't know, I just feel like since we have social media now, like, it's just so like a lot of dudes don't know how and this is no shade to dudes because i get it like dudes don't like rejection just as much as us females don't like rejection so i know sometimes it's hard for dudes to say like oh yeah let me let me holler at her and she was like y'all a lot of times they don't do that because they don't want to come off as oh you being thirsty or oh she gonna shoot me down so sometimes they just admire from afar and some i think also too fellas if you're watching this and ladies let me know like i feel like social media has spoiled us because we're so used to talking behind the screen it's so easy to shoot your shot behind the screen so easy to be like man you're so beautiful oh da 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 behind the screen but when it comes to saying that in person a lot of times i feel like men get cold feet i don't know if they would actually admit that i would love to get one of like my guy friends or like my cousins to come on my youtube channel and like we talk about this like that will be such a good conversation because i feel like people need to know, like women we want to know like why do you know why do men sometimes like they admire from afar instead of coming approach uh for me i don't i mean it, i mean for me as a woman i don't really do the whole shoot my shot thing i just don't personally 
I feel like me, I'm not afraid to shoot my shot. It's just like the Holy Spirit be telling me chill out. <laughs> like he be telling me chill out, like you don't don't do it. And I'd be like, I, I ain't gonna do it. Cause sometimes you just be one, you know, you just be one, you know. Test it out, see what's up, right? But the Holy Spirit be telling me like sit down. I'd be like, I ain't, I ain't gonna do it. And so I feel like maybe that's how it is with dudes too. Like maybe they feel maybe the Holy Spirit be telling them like nah just admire from afar and I've also learned about dudes too that when it comes down to them a lot of times that's what they do they just scope the scene they like to watch a woman for a little while not in a weird way but they just like to scope it out see like alright let me see how she treat her friends let me see how she treat her family if she on social media let me see what her social media presence is like and is she taking half naked pictures does she pride herself with modesty does she you know is she humble? What kind of content is she posting? How does she talk? Is she aggravating on her videos? Because if she aggravating in the 30 second video, my God. Um, <laughs> you know, because I feel like that's how I am too. Like, I like to, I like to watch and just see sometimes because you can just see so much when you just sit back and watch. Don't say nothing. Just sit back and watch. So, I don't know. That just was on my mind because when that particular event happened, it happened yesterday and it just got me thinking like, Hmm. Like, I know, like, the 30 and up, like, my daddy generation back then, it was so, he told me, too, he was like, man, saying dating was so much easier back then because we didn't have social media. We didn't have phones like that. We just had, like, house phones and pages, like, where you could either tell a person, like, look, I won't be with you. I don't. Like, it wasn't all that posting subliminals or he liked all these girls' pictures. He following Google females or she following Google dudes. So you don't really know what type of time they on. It wasn't none of that. It was straight up like, you want this person, you have to pursue them. You don't have a choice in the matter. You have to go pursue them. And I just, sometimes I wish like we could go back to dating in the 90s and the early 2000s because pre-social media looking back was so fire. Like it was, and we took, we took it for granted. Like it was so fire, bro, so fire. But I still have faith in it. I still have faith in this generation. I still have faith in love. Of course, y'all know me. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know that there's some great men out here. Not all men are dogs. Not all females are bodies. You know what I'm saying? There's some really great, great men out here. And I've, I've come in contact with a lot of them. Um, they have some great men out here. I've come in contact with some phenomenal females. You know, so I feel like in due time, the right people going to link up and be together. You know, but I just feel like it's all a matter of just like, oh my God, another subject. The next matter at hand that I would like to discuss is being yourself. Oh my God. Like, I feel like that's another thing. Social media then taunt people and made them feel like being themselves just don't work. So they feel like they got to have a whole another personality behind the screen. But it's like, I love this quote I saw one time. It was like, be yourself so that the people that's trying to find you can find you. Imagine if I came on here and acted a whole different way. The audience that God is trying to attract to me would never be able to find me because they'll be looking for somebody that does not exist. You know what I mean? Like if I was somebody totally different than who I am. So the people, so like what I mean is like, okay, let's say I'm on here and I'm acting like I live this bougie lifestyle. Like I'm just this untouchable female and like i'm so stubborn and mean i don't know who made that other thing and then you meet me in real life and i'm the total opposite you'll be like why was she acting like that on camera like aren't you Sasha monet off of youtube you act a whole different way you wouldn't even want to watch me no more because you'll realize that everything was a fake you'll think i'm a fraud after that so that's why I, when I put this camera on, I'm telling you, I know my friends be feeling like they on FaceTime with me because this is how my conversations be in real life. And everybody who meet me, you'll be surprised how many people who meet me remember my personality before they remember my face. And I feel like that's where a lot of dating goes downhill. A lot of friendships go downhill too because so many people are trying to live to these social media standards. I saw on TikTok one day when this girl had her friend hand on her glasses and she ended up taking a picture and she was like i had to use my best friend hands because my nails wasn't done but hers was and it matched my picture aesthetic perfectly and i thought to myself like how many people thought like that was really her hand like that's crazy to me that is so crazy to me but that's really like social media that's the reality of social media today like we got so many people 
don't even know who they are for real. Like they don't even know who they are. And until you get your identity in Christ, you'll never know who you are because social media does not make you, the amount of money you make does not make you, the amount of degrees you have does not make you, where you live does not make you. A woman went home, got homeless with her three kids because she went and moved to Houston to be an influencer. Baby, you could be an influencer right now in a small town of Ascension Parish. Like, <laughs> like the whole point of influencing is to try and influence. Like, uh, I'm, I consider myself to be a kingdom influencer because I'm trying to influence people to get their tail in God's face <laughs> and get their life right. You know what I'm saying? So that they can, you know, really live the life that God has for them. I'm not trying to influence y'all. To go buy Prada and all of that, no, because it's like though those things are are nice. It's nice to have it, but that's not fulfilling, y'all. Like just like when we go to a restaurant, I've noticed that if I go to a restaurant and I eat a full course meal right now, I'm gonna be full. But then when I get home, I'm gonna be hungry again. That's because that didn't fulfill me. But if, if my mama cook a, a meal and that's a meal I could keep on eating at home, and it's like you know I can that's gonna fulfill me because I can go get seconds, thirds. But once you leave the restaurant, that's it. And I feel like that's how social media with influencers. I feel like that's how it is with that too. Like they show you this highlight and it make you feel like, oh my God, why am I not doing that? Why am I not getting the brand deal? Why did I not get this? Why did I not get that whole time? You don't even know if that girl living like that. That girl didn't even get paid for them. If she did, then congratulations, but love the life you have. Until I love how J. Cole said that in that song. J. Cole was spitting the whole sermon. He didn't even know it. You'll never be happy until you love yours. Hold on, y'all. I'm trying to read something. Mm. Move out the way, sir. I can't read it. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Oh, wow. I finally got a chance to read that. Okay, cool. Let me read it. Love the light green. But yeah, like he said that. He's, he spoke a whole word. You will never be happy until you love yours. Point blank, period. You gotta love yourself. You gotta love your people. You gotta love the life God gave you. If you're supposed to be living in Houston, you'll be living in Houston. Maybe God wants you to live in Houston later on, but right now He has you where you are for such a time as this. That's Esther 4 and 14. Such a time as this. Suppose God has you where you are for such a time as this. You know, and I feel like when we look at everything from that perspective and from that, like, you know, that lens, it just makes life make so much more sense. Like, I often think to myself too, like, like I said, like with dating, I don't, I used to get frustrated with it at first because I used to think to myself like, dang, like, you know, I feel like I'm a good woman, you know, wait a good minute, <laughs> like, you know, like we all go through that little phase or whatever, but then I realized I'm like, or right, suppose it's not that God is hiding all the good men from you, suppose he loves you that much that he just wants it to be you and him for a while. You, him, and your baby for a while. You know, that he loved for you. I'm trying to put my ice in my cup before the light turns green. Oh, Lord. But suppose he wants... Oh, did I do it? Hey! I was able to do it. Bow, bow. But suppose he wants it to just be you, him, and um your baby for a while. You know? Maybe he just wants... You know? You never... Like, I had to start looking at stuff like that. And I know somebody going to feel me on that. Like, I really had to get to that point where I appreciate it remember I, my, I talk about that in my podcast steward in your singleness like steward in your single season like in any season you're in even if you're married if you're in a relationship like if you're single don't rush to be in a relationship if you're in a relationship don't rush marriage if you're married don't rush the next big don't rush into having kids if you have kids don't rush for your kids to grow up like it's like because when you do that like when Shiloh was a newborn and she was only sleeping for like two, three hours at a time. I would, be, I would say to myself, oh, I can't wait for the day Shiloh will sleep all night. Now Shiloh sleeps all night. And I look back on when Shiloh was three weeks old. And I just cry sometimes because I'd be like, my baby grew up so fast. And I didn't realize what I was wishing for when I wished for her to grow up. Like, I was so focused on, okay, the next best thing. When in reality, I didn't even embrace those younger days you know what i'm saying and now my girl and now my girl gonna be two by the time y'all see this she didn't turn two already but now she gonna be two and it's like dang shy all i have is pictures and memories of when you was a baby so now it's like now that she's two i embrace these days i'm not saying oh shy i can't wait till girl i can't wait till you old enough to drive no no i'm oh lord i don't like this angle <laughs> 
I'm embracing these years for real because I'm like, I know how fast those younger years went by. So I said, I like to say, like, just appreciate life. Appreciate what God got you. Like, if you only making $50,000 right now, you know what I'm saying? Like, appreciate that you even making money and just ask God, God, thank you for the increase. Help me to steward where I am now so that I can be prepared for where you're taking me. And that's that. I just, I just, I don't know. I don't know why God had me to get on here, but I'm preaching to myself too. I feel like that's something we just have to constantly remind ourselves of. That's like a consistent reminder, like constantly love yours, constantly love what God has given you, like love your life, love what you got going on because nobody else has your life. There's only one you. Nobody can do you like you do you. When you walk in a room, there's only one you. You know what I'm saying? Like appreciate that. You know, if you got a clientele, appreciate the fact that people come to see you. Whatever you do, your child, appreciate the fact that your child loves you. Like, just love your life, you know? So, yeah, I'm going to get my baby. And I just pray that this vlog bless y'all because, yeah, it's it's a short one. I might I might add some more to it. We're going to see. If I don't, then it's the end. Uh, if I do, see y'all in a little bit. <laughs> love y'all. Oh, snap. Your girl got her contacts back. Y'all. So I'm just leaving the gym, right? I'm gonna get me a new tripod, y'all. I promise. I say that every time I get on here. Y'all not even worried about that. Okay. I was at the gym. And, well, I'm just leaving the gym. And I just was sitting here thinking to myself, for real, like, OMG. Wait, this one probably be holding y'all. You gonna let me go, sir? Let me go, please. Thank you. So, I'm thinking to myself, right? Like, while well, I was talking to God. And I was thinking about like three, about two and a half years ago, one of my mom's friends was telling me like, you know, Seisha, you control the thermostat of your life. Nobody else controls that. You are the only one who has a switch to your thermostat of your life. So if you want, she was like, what happens when somebody comes to your house? Can't nobody just walk up to your thermostat and turn it on, turn it off? You're not having that. She was like, so don't let nobody have control over the thermostat of your life. And when I tell y'all that blew my mind, I was like, oh my God, because that's so true. Like, it don't matter what circumstance you have going on in your life, whatever situation, whatever it is, you get to determine what, like, what type of spirit you want to operate in. You get to determine if you want to operate in the spirit of disgust, in the spirit of joy, in the spirit of gratitude, because in everything God said in Romans 8 28, all things work together for our good who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose, which means that even in a storm, you can still find goodness in that. Because I know for me, looking back in the moment, my attitude wasn't all cute. But now I see how even in those storms I endured in the past, that there was so much goodness that God was doing in my like in those times too. Like now it's like, oh my God, yay. But even back then, though it was gray and it was kind of blurry, the goodness was in that because in those storms, I got closer to God. In those storms, I got reintroduced to him and I got reintroduced to who I am in him. I gained a new identity. I realized who I really am. It's not about the likes you get on Instagram. It's not about how much money you got in the bank. I think I talked about that couple minutes ago on this exact vlog like it's not about none of that like if you don't know who you are in christ it's, it none of it matters and then so while i was working out i was led to watch um jerry flowers he had a sermon six from six months ago called notice the timing and he was just saying like how the enemy pays attention oh we know that like he pays attention and so he goes by your cycle so even if you're not that person anymore he'll still send certain people in your life to try and dig up that old you but it's up to you to say nah i'm not doing it mm -mm. and you can't get mad at god when you make those mistakes because one thing about the holy spirit he will always give you a warning he ain't just gonna throw you like uh like he ain't just gonna throw you in a in a in a situation nah before a situation even happened, you'll hear his voice. If you can hear him, you'll hear his voice saying, don't do it, don't mess with that. I feel like even people who don't know God's voice, you still get some type of inkling in your spirit that's telling you, uh, oh, something is weird about this. I don't know. People be like that gut feeling. That's the Holy Spirit telling you don't do it. And I know from experience, like I remember like times when I ignored the Holy Spirit, y'all. Oh my God. And somebody said, go ahead, go ahead. Somebody said, 
um, one time on TikTok of somebody that did was like, ignoring the Holy Spirit is going to cost you. Oh, that was on Twitter. I saw that last night. They say ignoring the Holy Spirit is going to cost you. And I can speak from experience. There was so many trials and tribulations and storms that I could have avoided had I listened to the Holy Spirit. But even in that, even in my disobedience in the past, God still used that for my good. But now I know his voice. And so now because I know his voice and because I know better, I have to really be intentional with obeying him. When I hear him say, leave that alone, don't say, oh, I'm going to just see. I'm going to just see. Because see me, I used to be that type of person. I used to be that type of person. Like, I love the challenge. Like, just the the the, the fierceness of the, the oh, like what that's called, the adrenaline of like, oh, I feel like that's bad, but I'm going to just see. I don't do that no more. Because I'm like, why would I risk my life? Because every time you disobey God, Every time you disobey the Holy Spirit, you're putting your life at risk because he's literally here to help us, to help save us. So if you do the opposite of what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do, you're putting your life at risk, <laughs> period. And I look back and I'll be like, God, if I ain't never knew you loved me, looking back, I see that child, you had your hands on me like no other. Because when I be seeing a lot of things like on the news, I'll be like, God, that could have been me. But by your grace, oh my God. I'm so grateful that that's not me, you know? So, yeah. I was just glad to come on here and tell y'all that. I had a really good um morning so far. I'm excited. We're going to rain. Okay. Is this going to be part of... Y'all might not... Okay, wait. This is this is, this vlog is going to be uploaded after Shiloh's birthday. So, you've already seen what we what, what I did already. But uh, a month ago, bring Shiloh. Cook, me, and her, me, her grandmother, and her dad... We about to go bring Shiloh some cupcakes for school and stuff. And uh, oh, our little baby and our grandmother. We're gonna go bring some cupcakes because Shiloh is my child. She is extra and she loves a good old Shiloh shebang. So we're about to go do that. Um, Shiloh is actually gonna be with her dad tonight and tomorrow because her party is Sunday. So I think I'm going to go on a date with my niece. I think me and her might go eat out maybe tomorrow and just spend the day together. I think that's going to be really good for her too because she was my, she's my first niece. And you know how it is when you're the first niece. Um, and I'm her only auntie on her daddy's side. So, you know, me and her real close, real tight knit. So I think this will be good for me and her to like kind of have that bonding time together you know, just the two of us and then we'll be able to have me, her, and Shy together on Sunday. So it'll be fun. It'll be good. I think it's really important for aunties to have that one-on-one -on -one time with your niece and uh, nephews, especially if they were your first one. Please. Well, I don't matter if they was your first, second, or third, but that first one, you gotta remind them that they still your baby. So, yeah. So I think that'd be good for me and her to have some little one-on-one -on -one time. But, um, I will talk to y'all later. I got some stuff to go handle.